All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel once again to talk more Halloween 2021 reviews. And today we're talking about a movie from the one and only George Romero. I had no idea that he directed this movie from 1988. So today we're talking Monkey Shines. It's a movie that's been something that I meant to see so long ago. Even from the very beginning when, the, when I heard about this movie, I was like, I, I, gotta, I gotta be like, I must have been like 12 when this came out and I remember hearing about this and uh, back then I was a witness still so uh, I didn't get to see this movie and it just became one of those movies that I think about and not watch and think about and not watch and think and just here we are all these years 2021 I'm finally watching Monkey Shine so if you like what we're doing here on the channel make sure you're hitting the like button and subscribe button uh, for all of you that are new to the channel welcome to the conversation for all of you returning subscribers, as always, welcome back and thanks for watching and uh, how you doing? <laughs> so yeah, 1988's Monkey Shine starring Jason Begg. Okay, he's, it's the guy from Chicago PD, right? And he's been in California Cage. He's been in a ton of shit. Still working, good working actor, Chicago, a lot of stuff in Chicago. I think his name is Jason Begg, he, because it's B-E-G-H-E. Beggy, Begg, he. Uh, Kate McNeil, John Pankow, Stanley Tucci, Stephen Root, Janine Northern fucking Exposure Turner, William Newman, Tom Savini. It says Tom Savini, but I don't, I don't remember seeing Tom Savini in this. I know he did some of the makeup effects in this. And so, if you don't know what this movie is, let's do the like little overview, shall we? So, basically... It's athlete Alan becomes quadriplegic after a horrific traffic accident. His friend Jeffrey, who is conducting experiments with monkeys, offers Alan a well-trained monkey named Ella to keep him company and raise his spirits. But the initially healthy bond, which even enables Alan to form a romantic relationship with Melanie, gradually disintegrates once Ella begins to channel Alan's underlying rage and takes it out on his loved ones. Now, see, when I first heard about this movie, I just thought helper monkey goes crazy, starts killing people, and then eventually threatens our main character's uh, life. I did not expect this movie to go where it goes, and I loved this movie in a lot of ways. I really liked this movie. This isn't as good as the reaction I got last year from Fright Night, but because I had certain expectations going in what i got was way better than what was in my head plus finding out that stanley tucci's in this steven roots in this john pankow's in this even uh you know jason beggy who i you know didn't know that that was the actor who's playing him i was getting all these kind of really cool you know acting surprises in this plus finding out it was george romero you know really crazy one of the only things I didn't like about this movie, though, is its soundtrack. It is very cheesy, very corny. Uh, I think that that was one thing that, that could have gotten better. Even the tense music. Like, a lot of the first part of this movie is very light. The music is very light. Um, but even when they try to make it tense, it's a little too... I don't know, it's just not, it's not there, it's not there, and I felt like the music was there early to kind of make you feel like everything is good and great and grand, and then it starts to get a little more dour and darker, but the darker music just didn't get as dark as it needed to go to balance the real light 
touch that it had before. So that, it didn't take me out of it. It was just more annoying than anything. Now, this also came out around the time, you know, you had like Project X. You know, the one with Matthew Broderick and the chimps. And this, you know, they also had Diane Fossey's movie about gorillas in the mist. There was a lot of like monkey movies in this like area. But not just that, but the, uh, the, um, the discussions around animal testing and why those, you know, and, and, and it was in Project X and it's in this movie. And not just monkeys and, and chimps and other things, but just animal testing uh, was really big news. Like a lot, it was a hot button issue. It still is a hot button issue, or at least it should be more of a hot button issue. I don't think we really talk about it as much as we used to. Every once in a while, it'll flare up and you'll hear something about uh, how animals are kept in like on farms and stuff. But I don't hear as much about you know testing things out on animals as much as we used to i remember even uh in this time period there was a whole storyline i think in the comic strip bloom county that dealt with uh animal testing uh if i'm recalling that correctly i know that's random but trying to think topical in this time period uh what was going on and in this yeah, you got some crazy experiments, but they ain't testing the makeup on these monkeys. No, no, that is not what's happening here. And this also, the very, very first part of this movie has a, like a little, not a disclaimer, but like a bit of information that the Helping Hands company based out of Boston uh, at the time was doing this. And the first thing I thought was, well, okay, if, you, if you're making helper monkeys in Boston, and I'm sure it's other places, wouldn't you be worried that this movie would give your work, like, a bad name? Like, if people saw this movie, wouldn't they think... And I know that there's more going on here than just a helper monkey. This helper monkey gets... Or Cambridgean, if you want to call it. Definitely had some help getting where it goes. Like, it's not just a regular helper monkey. It's got some genetic changes made to its DNA which we'll get to that but still people watch it's like monkey see monkey do you know like people what people see people do like so they'd be like oh shit I saw this monkey uh, that's supposed to be a helping guy try to kill him later on so I don't think we need a helper monkey for grandma you know Florence who's a paraplegic I don't know why I just go with me here it just seems weird that if you want positive re reactions to this kind of thing, I, I, it, maybe they did. Maybe they did protest this. Maybe they were like, please don't. Please don't do set, set this, uh, you know, project that we're working on back. Because, <laughs> I mean, we joked in the chat uh, for the viewing party for this, you know. Yeah, oh, helper monkeys. There's no way anything could go wrong here. But um, I really, really dug this. I really, really dug this. And, and what I thought was really interesting is a nice setup of guy who's a athlete, likes to run track, gets hit by a car. Now, the way he got hit by a car <laughs> was kind of was different. It's not like uh, anything that I've ever seen how a person gets into an accident before. Uh, he's got a backpack loaded up with bricks as he runs for training, which I think is something that some people do put weights on their back for running. But he gets hit because a German shepherd gets close to him. Uh, like It's tied up in somebody's yard, but it gets near him on his run, and it scares him enough to step out into the road where... It, where a slow move... I guess it doesn't matter if you hit just right... Anything can happen, but he uh, it's the car that hits him didn't seem to be going very fast at, at all And we just kind of see him spin like standing up spin kind of in the where you know, and We just cut to the hospital where he's now a paraplegic because the doctors uh, They saved him, you know But now he's a paraplegic and the doctor was played by Stanley Tucci and he's got <laughs> The introduction of Stanley Tucci in this is just great. He's they put Alan, the character that's been hit, under, 
And the doctor walks in and goes, oh, the patient's under grade. Now we can talk about him now. His ass is hairier than yours. Like, it's just a really weird, the guy's got a weird bedside manner. And boy, oh boy, is he also a piece of shit. Because once Alan comes back home from the hospital in his wheelchair that he has to blow into, you see, you meet Linda, played by Janine Turner, who... I had, is again just one of the many many crushes I had back in that time period Janine Turner <sighs> breathe Rob breathe breathe Rob breathe because damn make me want to go out and watch every episode of Northern Exposure because mm, damn well he gets back from you know for this big party right and the doctor sees Linda there and they clearly have something going on she is even Packing up her toiletries the day he's coming back from the hospital and gonna just bounce with the doctor and the doctor's pretending to be his buddy. It it's so fucking wild. Like that this is but it's all gonna go somewhere, right? It's all this the sleazy doctor, the cheating girlfriend, the one who's leaving him because he's a paraplegic. And the thing is, is like I kind of get where she's coming from because not the part that she's cheating on the doctor but like bailing and I know that that's a terrible thing to say probably to some of you but what I hear me out because honestly that's a lot they're not married and it's a lot to take care of somebody in that position you know, it's with, whether it's somebody who has a, a disease that you have to take care of, you know, a, 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 as far as like home care. But someone with a paraplegic, that means you've got to get them in and out of, the, out of bed, on and off the toilet, on, in and out of the shower. you got to change them. you got to feed them. you got to do all sorts of stuff. And if you're not, if you aren't capable of doing that, then you should get out immediately. She's doing it in an awful, awful way. <laughs> she picked really bad timing. But, you know, you'd just be hurting you're the person if you stuck around and, and, and were, you know, trying to do something you know you can't do. It's like being a parent, right? Don't have kids if you can't. You know what I mean? Don't have kids if you, if you just can't. Like, I, I'm like, man, I love, I, I love my nieces and nephews, but me, look at me. <laughs> I, I take care of myself and that I'm a selfish prick I couldn't take care of a bunch of kids you know I don't um, you know maybe I'm maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit maybe I haven't met the right woman but uh, or a woman <laughs> to be more specific but I mean it just feels like if you can't do a job like this you should probably not try but she should not leave him the way she is. And I've talked about this element way too long. Uh, so his mother gets him like a nurse. And we meet John Pankow's Jeffrey, who's his friend. How does he know him? We don't know. But we know that Jeffrey works in a lab, an animal testing lab, where he's working on making monkeys smarter through some kind of chemical concoction that has to do with taking off pieces of a human brain and adding it to this concoction and injecting it into the monkeys to make them smarter. I don't know if that's how it works. I know that they could do a lot of crazy stuff with science. This is 1988 and he's just shaving off pieces of someone's brain tissue that's dead and injecting it into a monkey after running it through some kind of formula that we'd never have explained. And this already smart helper monkey becomes extra smart. So smart, in fact, that I thought that this was going to be where it just goes. That you've got an extra smart monkey that becomes, like, maybe mania. Like, it, a monkey's brain can't handle monkey thoughts. Or being trapped with human thoughts inside a monkey brain and body would make it go crazy. But that's not, well, I mean, it's kind of what happens, but, like, more happens than that. Because Alan ends up with the monkey because Pankow's character uh, needs to get it out. Because his 
he's got a scientist rival by the name of Burbage, played by Stephen Root, who is, as always, Stephen Root is a wonderful, wonderful actor. I love Stephen Root. I could set the place on fire. He's the guy. He's the stapler guy from Office Space, okay? But he's so much more than that. He is so much more than that. This guy is, this is the kind of character actor that just can steal any scene he's in. And you can see, you can just see this, the, what's going to happen in this guy's career. Because this is early, early, man. Even though he looks very much like he's going to. And Stanley Tucci does too, except he has just a little bit more hair. But not for long, Stanley. Pretty soon, uh, that little bit of hair on the top of your head go bye-bye. So, Burbage, this guy, he's competing with George, George Jeffrey's John Pankow's character for research and, and credit on who's going to be the first one to say that they made smart monkeys. And it's like Jeffrey's doing all the work, but Burbage it looks like he's just waiting for the opportunity to swoop in and take the the proof of this work. So to get the the smart monkey out of the hands possibly being taken from him by this guy Burbage, he gives the monkey to Alan as a helper monkey and does not tell him a lick about what's going on with this monkey's genetics. And how it's been changed and how it's, yes, it's really smart. And they just don't realize how smart this monkey can start doing. It starts knowing a lot of things. Starts feeling things. And there was this moment when we were watching it where Alan starts to have these dreams. And everything's going great. Their relationship with the monkey is great. And it, it... it's it's really really kind of sweet like here the monkeys hugging him and it they seem to develop this bond and it's very emotional and it's very sweet and very lighthearted and and all you all I was thinking was when is the because I know the other shoe's gonna drop but I thought it was gonna go a different way I did not expect Alan to start having dreams of being in a monkey's body like seeing through a monkey like running around. Kind of like Bran on Great Game of Thrones, where he could warg into a wolf and he'd be running around and he could experience things as a wolf. And I, there was this moment where I go, is is he psychically connected to this thing? And in the chat, where you know, it's like, what? Uh, you think what? What? How? <laughs> and that's absolutely the right answer. Is like. I knew what I was seeing, but I didn't know the hows. And I still don't know the hows because the whole science about this, once you hit that threshold, right? Forget the fact that I I don't particularly buy that this is how monkeys get smarter through some sort of brain-slicing mixed cocktail shot into its ass. Maybe it is. But I do have to draw the line at that that same concoction, only given to the monkey, sounds like a psychic bond between man and animal. Because we find out that, like, Alan's emotions are being, like, the, 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 Ella the monkey is based is like absorbing his emotions and vice versa. Like the emotions that Alan has or Ella has him. So like he'll be really angry at people when it's really the emotions that Ella has and vice versa. I think. Because he only seems to get agitated when Ella's around. Well, the limit that happens here is that there's a, a moment where we find out that the doctor screwed up his spinal surgery. That whatever happened was like the accident just kind of showed a problem that was there. And that the paraplegic state that he's in could be possibly reversed. And if it wasn't for the incompetence of this doctor, he might not have ended up where he is. So he tries to contact the doctor and he finds out that he is shacking up with his ex-girlfriend. 
And when he accidentally somehow sends the monkey over to their house, this cabin that he's living in. And don't ask me how the monkey gets all the way to this cabin because, I don't know. I mean, I guess it it's not hard to travel by land. It just takes a really long time. And he sets on fire and kills them both. <laughs> and when when Alan realizes that they are dead and he knows it was a fire and he knows somehow that the monkey did it, he freaks out because they're starting to look like partners in crime here. And that, I did not expect this, this like psychic crimes through monkey connection going on in this movie, which I did like. It's just you do have to turn your brain off for this and just either either in or you're out at this point. And I was in. I'm like, fuck it. We're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna go with it. And I don't do that lightly in, in most movies. But I was enjoying myself so much that I was willing to say, nineteen eighty eight, I'm gonna catch you a break. I'm gonna enjoy this movie. Just don't push it too much further. So once Alan realizes this, he has Ella taken back to the lab, which does not go over well with Ella. Ella starts freaking out because the bond that they have for Ella, it's real. And I think she loves him. I think she legit loves Alan. And I don't mean like, oh, it, it doesn't, it isn't that nice. I think it legit loves him. Love loves him. And if Ella was a human... Ella would be wanting to knock boots with Alan. Well, the longer Alan goes without connection to the monkey, the more he starts to feel normal. Which leads to him falling in love with Melanie, the trainer of the monkey. She uh, She's the one who runs uh, a place for helper monkeys. And she'd been introduced earlier. She's played by... Um... Uh-oh. What happened here? Okay, played by Kate McNeil, another actress who's been around forever in a lot of different things. And in this moment, we get, this is where the, mo the movie does almost a go too far again, where we have a paraplegic sex scene. So I can check that off the old bucket list for of like weird sex stuff that I <laughs> need to like <laughs> have seen before I die. I don't know, not really. But she, they have like this apparatus for him in his bed and she gets all up on it like a, sec, a weird sex swing and somehow they do stuff. It was weird. But at the same time, I'm like, fuck, this movie's got everything. Weird sex swings, psychic monkeys, <laughs> quadriplegics. So they fall in love and Alan and her become a thing and they come back and eventually the monkey gets away from John Pankow's character because the monkey now wants the serum. It was pissed when it was getting shots before, but now it wants the serum. It, it needs it. It wants to be as smart as it can possibly be. Eventually it ends up back at Alan's where we have like the big climax of the movie. You know, Jeffrey realizes what's going on. Jeffrey even tries to link up with it uh, to see where it's going. And it has no interest in helping John Pankow because he wants it to, to go after Burbage, who's got his chemical, which we never see Burbage again. We never know what happens to the formula that is now missing. For all intents and purposes, Burbage is making an army of smart monkeys. And we would have had Monkey Shines 2, Electric Boogaloo, The Apocalypse. But the monkey goes back to Alan's, where it, it, it becomes a game of cat and mouse, sort of, and like trickery of Alan trying to figure out how to remove this animal from his life to get rid of it permanently, because nobody else can help. It drops a hairdryer into the bathtub where his mom is. Bzz, goodbye, mommy dearest. It when Pankow shows up, it with a poison and syringe, the monkey f tricks him and scares him and injects him with his own poison, so he dies. Melanie finally comes over. She gets tripped by the monkey, bonks her head into the coffee table, and gets knocked out. 
and the monkey's trying to set her on fucking fire. <laughs> and it's actually a legit, like, scary scene because it's a monkey trying to light someone on fire. And also jumping back and forth onto Alan's lap because Alan's desperate to get the monkey away from his girlfriend. But he can't move. And it's this this whole bit is just really, really good. And, and w- then when the monkey tries to use the poison on the girlfriend with the injection, Alan finally does what was teased about and foreshadowed about with this whole thing with his surgery and that every once in a while he kind of involuntarily moves his hand. And he finally is able to get enough strength to move his hand to turn on the cassette tape player that the monkey likes and gets the monkey to come up onto him and hug him and get close because, you know, I love you, baby. Which gives Alan just enough time to take a big-ass fucking bite into this monkey's neck and not let go. And he shakes it around like a fucking rag doll back and forth, like literally like a dog. You ever seen a dog with just, just... you know, or just shaking something to death. <laughs> well, that's what happens here. And Alan saves himself with great upper and a real nice uh, bite radius and uh, obviously a real strong grip on his mouth muscles. I don't know how to talk about that. And kills Ella by shaking her to death after biting her, like, in the neck. And we cut to Alan in the hospital they're about to do the surgery to fix his spine when all of a sudden a fucking monkey jumps out of the wound that they make in the back and he's all but of course it's a nightmare this is really well done though it's really creepy and alan is now able to walk again and melanie and him ride off into the sunset together monkey shines is fucking awesome (laughs) And it is now one of my new guilty pleasure movies. And I am so mad that I didn't, I don't get memories of this. Like, this is the first memory of this movie. I, it's like when I think about movies just from those, you know, like those guilty pleasure movies, just movies you just really like and you have like years and years of them living with those memories. And now I've got plenty of life left. I'll be stuck with the memories from this movie. I just wish that I had them 30 years ago. So, Monkey Shines. Hell yeah. So, if you like this review for Monkey Shines, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. Otherwise, we're going to be back. Still more Halloween 2021 reviews coming. And again, a lot of these are Rob's never seen, but we have some stuff coming up that I have actually seen. So, get ready. For those of you who did not like any of this, we will give you a better memory. So if you did like this, please put on shades or look away. If you have a sensitivity to light, do not look directly into this motherfucker. And we're going to give the people who hated this 28 minutes of their life back. Here's something from the movie that's better than what I just said. For you, anyway. Bye, everybody. See you on the next one.